covering an area of over 600,000 square miles and handling more than 1,400 flights on a daily basis, all without the use of radar, all without the use of radar, all without the use of radar, all without the use of radar. The Shanwick Oceanic Control Area is a busy and complex piece of airspace. The Class A Shanwick Oceanic Control Area, or OCA, is an ATC environment with no surveillance radar capability. CPDLC and ACARS data link communication is sent and received directly between controllers and the flight deck, and HF radio remains the primary means of voice communication. For those flights suitably equipped, ADS position report information obtained directly from the onboard flight management systems is received automatically at a controller's workstation. Flights which aren't ADS equipped will pass such information by HF voice communications. The Gander, Reykjavik and Santa Maria OCAs where flights are similarly controlled, mainly without the use of radar and also using data link and HF voice communications, share boundaries with the Shanwick OCA. The Scottish, Shannon, London, Brest and Madrid flight information regions also bound Shanwick's airspace. Flights within these FIRs are controlled via domestic area control agencies under radar surveillance and use VHF voice communications. Parts of the Shanwick OCA are delegated to Shannon as the Shannon Oceanic Transition Area and the Northern Oceanic Transition Area and to Brest as the Brest Oceanic Transition Area. These transition areas are provided with full radar surveillance from the delegated ATC agencies. Shanwick's controllers and ATC support staff operate from the Prestwick Air Traffic Control Centre, located on the west coast of Scotland. Shanwick share an operations room with Scottish domestic and Scottish military controllers. November 254 Sierra Delta, I don't have a flight plan for you. What's your Oceanic entry point? Oceanic entry point is Dogo. Your estimate for Dogal, your requested flight level and Mach number. That's meant for no cap. Dogal is one two two three Mach decimal eight zero flight level four zero zero. Oceanic ATC clearances requested and received via VHF are relayed between flight crew and Shanwick planning controllers through a small team of qualified support staff known as clearance delivery officers or CDOs. The CDOs work alongside the Shanwick controllers in the Prestwick Centre Ops room. That's copy, stand by. Shanwick Air Canada 879 position. Air Canada 879, Shanwick, can you go ahead your 20 west position report please? Air Canada 879, uh, position 56 north, zero to the west at 1550, flight level 350. Estimating 57 north, zero to the west at 1644. It's important to note that all HF communication is relayed through separate HF radio stations staffed by HF radio operators. The main HF radio station used by Shanwick, using the call sign Shanwick Radio, is located in Bally Green, near Shannon in Western Ireland. Bally Green also has a VHF clearance delivery and frequency assignment capability. Shanwick Oceanic controllers do not use the same equipment as their Scottish domestic and military colleagues. As Shanwick cannot see the progress of a flight using radar, controllers rely entirely on all flights complying with their Oceanic ATC clearance. Aircraft must have the necessary equipment to enter Oceanic airspace. A full list of requirements is available, detailed in relevant state AIPs and the ICAO MNPS DOC 007. But essentially, before entering the Shanwick OCA, all flights must have their oceanic clearance, a functioning HF radio, and suitable navigation equipment. Shanwick's methods of operation are dictated by the diurnal flow of traffic across the North Atlantic, with a predominant westbound flow during the day and a predominant eastbound flow at night. 
To provide the best possible service for the majority of users, a system of tracks, known as the North Atlantic Organized Track System, or OTS, are designed on a daily basis for both eastbound and westbound flights. Shanwick are responsible for designing, coordinating and publishing the westbound tracks, with Gander being responsible for the eastbound OTS process. Further agreements are in place with Gander to define which levels are available for westbound and eastbound traffic, depending upon time of day. Other tactical level ownership agreements also exist with Santa Maria and Reykjavik to integrate traffic leaving or joining the main flow. Shanwick procedures are explored in more depth when we look at the control of a standard westbound flight. Tracks will be created to take advantage of prevailing winds, avoiding headwinds in the case of the westbound design, and avoiding any significant weather systems and airspace restrictions that may apply on the day. This means that on successive days, the tracks can vary considerably in latitude. Five or six westbound tracks are typically published, the northernmost of which is designated Alpha, with adjacent tracks to the south named Bravo through to Echo or Foxtrot. The track structure for the following day is normally published shortly after 2100 UTC. Westbound tracks are valid for flights crossing 30 west from 1130 to 1900 UTC. Around three hours ahead of the flight, Air Lingus's operations file their flight plan. This will be based on the latest weather forecasts and the location of the published organised track system. On occasion, the planned routing might be at variance with the track structure. However, here the flight plan adheres to published westbound track ECHO. The crew plans to enter Shanwick Oceanic airspace at Pickle exiting Shanwick and simultaneously entering the adjacent Gander Oceanic Control Area at 57 North, 30 West. Each day's published tracks are given a unique identity, known as a TMI or Track Message Identification. The TMI is a sequential number based on the Julian calendar, commencing at 001 on New Year's Day and ending at 365 or 366 on New Year's Eve. As this flight occurred on the 17th of January, the TMI is 017. As part of their pre-flight actions, the crew check they've received the correct TMI number and cross-check that their flight plan coordinates exactly match those published for track echo. These are then plotted on an oceanic airspace planning chart. Once on the flight deck, these coordinates will be entered into the aircraft navigation system. Shamrock 137, wind 18010, clear takeoff from 116, bye bye. Following takeoff from Dublin, the flight is handed to Shannon Area Control for transit through Irish airspace. At this point, the aircraft is still under radar surveillance. Shamrock 137, good afternoon, identified. Climb flight level 280. Climb flight level 280, Shamrock 137. All flights entering Shanwick airspace are required to request an oceanic clearance between 30 and 90 minutes from the oceanic boundary. Pilots can request oceanic clearance in a number of different ways. By data link via ACARS. At Shanwick, this is referred to as an ORCA or Oceanic Route Clearance Authorization Request. By VHF on one of the allocated Shanwick Clearance Delivery VHF frequencies. By HF if outside of VHF range. The radio station responsible for Shanwick HF communications is located at Bally Green on the west coast of Ireland. Bally Green also have two VHF frequencies for communicating with aircraft that are in VHF radio range. If all else fails, pilots can make a request via the ATC agency with who they are currently in contact. This would then be relayed to Shanwick. A clearance is required for the entire transit of oceanic airspace. The request must contain boundary estimate, 
requested flight level and speed from entry, plus, importantly, the maximum level achievable at the boundary. If ATC imposes a restriction with which the crew cannot comply, or if a reported estimate changes by more than two minutes, the pilot must report to ATC as soon as possible to enable Shanwick to reassess the clearance. On the flight deck of Shamrock 137, an oceanic clearance request is sent via ACARS. The flight estimates pickle at 1516, requesting flight level 370, which is also the aircraft's maximum attainable level at this point. A Shanwick planning controller, who takes information via a flight data display and a graphical data display, handles requests for oceanic clearance. The displays used are the human machine interface for the Shanwick Automated Air Traffic System, or SATS. SATS assists Shanwick controllers in tracking the thousands of flights in oceanic airspace and is one of the most sophisticated ATC data processing systems in the world. When the clearance request is received, the planning controller selects the message and this raises the flight plan for Shamrock 137. For every request, the planning controller must ensure that clearances issued maintain separation and comply with both Shanwick procedures and the requirements of receiving ATC agencies. A conflict probe is made on the flight. This means that SATS looks for conflicts that would arise should the aircraft be granted the requested clearance. In this case, American 4-5 is estimating Pickle 14 minutes behind Shamrock 137. The minimum time interval required between these two flights is 10 minutes. But if SATS recognises a time difference that's within 4 minutes of the prescribed minimum, a warning is displayed to the planning controller. In such cases, the planning controller will restrict flights as necessary sometimes issuing a not-before time restriction directly to a flight as part of its oceanic clearance. In this case, however, Shanwick issues a requirement only to the transferring Shannon domestic controller to ensure a specified minimum time separation or time interval is applied at the oceanic boundary. The time intervals that apply may vary depending upon the speed differential between succeeding aircraft the cleared routing and also environmental conditions. The Shannon controller will monitor the situation and, if necessary, instruct American 4-5 to adjust speed to ensure the minimum separation is not compromised. Although the probe raised a warning, there are no actual predicted conflicts should Shamrock 137 follow the requested clearance. SATS places a P on the electronic strip to indicate that the flight is provisionally cleared and a new window appears which contains the oceanic clearance. SATS can send the clearance via data link or for issue via either Bally Green or via the clearance delivery officer located within the ops room at Prestwick. In this instance, the clearance request was received via data link, so the option to send by data link is automatically selected by default. The planning controller cross-checks to ensure that the SATS prediction is correct and then issues the clearance. When the clearance is issued, SATS changes the P to an I on the electronic strip and the clearance is sent to the aircraft. An oceanic clearance message is also sent to Shannon, advising them of the clearance. The final stage of the oceanic clearance process occurs when the clearance has been checked and acknowledged by the flight crew. In the case of a data link readback, SATS automatically removes the eye from the flight data display. The crew of Shamrock 137 requested and received clearance via data link. But for demonstration purposes, a request for oceanic clearance was also made via Shanwick radio at Valley Green. The radio operator at Valley Green relays the request to Prestwick and this is again displayed to the planning controller who conducts a conflict probe on the flight. 
the flight is provisionally cleared on a requested clearance. But this time, the method of transmission selected by default is Bally Green. The clearance is sent to Bally Green for issue via HF or VHF. Shamok 137, Shamok Radio, Shamok Oceanic Clearance, Shamok 137 to Kilo Bravo. Roger, your readback is all correct. Shamrock 137, TMI 017, and just confirm your estimate for Pico, please. Estimating Pico at 1517, Shamrock 137. Roger, Shamrock 137, estimating Pico, time 1517. Following receipt of a correct pilot readback, the radio operator returns a typed readback message which is received at the relevant Shanwick planning controller's workstation. On receipt of this message, the planner cross-checks the readback and updates the flight strip accordingly. Whilst the planning controller handles flights prior to the oceanic boundary, flights in Shanwick airspace are actually controlled by an oceanic en route controller. 20 minutes before oceanic entry, the en route controller will receive a first notification of the expectant flight in his inbound flight list. At this stage, the flight is checked to ensure procedural separation is guaranteed, that all flight level allocation and routing procedures are complied with and all necessary coordinations have taken place. On the electronic strip display, grey boxes at the end of estimate times indicate a following flight has estimates that are within four minutes of the prescribed minimum separation. These will relate to American 4-5, although the en route controller doesn't yet know this, the flight being too far from the oceanic boundary for it to currently be displayed. Back at Shannon Centre, the radar controller also ensures the flight is at the correct level as it approaches the Shanwick entry point. At oceanic entry, ATC responsibility for the flight is transferred from Shannon to the oceanic en route controller, and the aircraft enters a fully procedural ATC control environment. Shamrock 137, overhead Pico, radar service terminated. Contact Shanwick Radio, 127 decimal liner, it's on the floor. 127 decimal liner, thank you, Shamrock 137. The flight is instructed to contact Shanwick Radio on VHF. The radio operator at Bally Green passes the crew primary and secondary HF frequencies for both Shanwick and Gander, and a cell call check is carried out. Shamrock 137 is CPDLC, Gander next. Shamrock 137 is Shamrock Radio, CPDLC with Gander next. The primary frequency for Shanwick is going to be 5649. Please call Shamrock Radio now on secondary first, cell call check on 6622, Shamrock Radio. Okay, primary is 5649 on secondary 6622, at 30 West Gander on 8831, secondary 11279, and we'll call on 6622 now from Shamrock 137. Shamrock 137, request cell call, Gulf, Papa, Quebec, Romeo, over. Shamrock 137. Shamrock 137, cell call, check OK, cell call watch on 6622, over. Return out to 5649er, take back your primary, take back your primary, and 
5649 and now, Shamark 137. Shamark, Shamark 137. Shamark 137, good day, sir. Sir, call Golf. Although Shamrock 137 will communicate with Shanwick via CPDLC, the carriage of HF and the requirement to maintain a listening watch remains mandatory for flight operations within the Shanwick OCA. Unless directed otherwise by ATC, pilots flying in the North Atlantic FIRs will operate transponders continuously in mode AC, displaying code Alpha 2000 except that the last assigned code will be retained for a period of 30 minutes after entry into oceanic airspace. In addition, all flights operating within North Atlantic airspace are required to transmit position reports at each position or waypoint defined in the oceanic clearance. These are either transmitted by voice using HF communications or automatically through FMC or ADS position reporting. When Shamrock 137 crosses Pickle, its position report is automatically downlinked via ADS. And provided all elements are within tolerance, the controller will see an automatic update on the electronic strip display. If any element of a position report is outside tolerance, a conformance alert message will populate the message queue for controller action. American 45 is by now displayed above the Shamrock strip with grey boxes at the beginning of initial estimate times. This indicates the flight is following within four minutes of the minimum separation for the corresponding estimates of Shamrock 137. Later estimates don't carry the warning as the Shamrock is flying at a faster speed. Flights are also shown on the graphical data display, although it's important to realise that this display simply replicates exactly the data shown on the flight data display. It's a representation of position only and is not a surveillance radar tool. Aircraft equipped with CPDLC automatically establish contact with Shanwick. The en route controller monitors the flight progress throughout the Shanwick area and will action any requests for change that the flight makes. Here, Shamrock 137 is requesting to reduce speed from Mach decimal 81 to Mach decimal 80. A corresponding message appears on the en route controller's screen and he selects the flight plan. A copy of the plan is made. In this copy, the controller changes Mach number to decimal 80 and he makes a further conflict probe of the flight. SATS once again provides a warning regarding the American 45 following behind. And since Shamrock 137 is now requesting the same speed as the following aircraft, the system indicates the warning from current position to landfall. However, although American 45 is following at close to the prescribed minimum time spacing, the controller is satisfied that separation will be maintained and he now coordinates the speed change with Gander. Gander Oceanic. Hello Gander, it's Shanwick. Can I track Echo please, flight level 370? Yes, go ahead. Uh, the Shamrock 137. Echo, yes. Uh, is that Mac 81 now requesting Mac 80 please? Mac 80 is approved for Shamrock 137. Mac 80 is approved on the Shamrock 137, thank you, bye-bye. Once coordination has been effected, the electronic strip is amended to reflect this and the clearance is sent to the aircraft. When the crew acknowledge they have received the clearance, the controller selects readback and the SAT system updates the prime flight plan to reflect Mach decimal 80.
At a later point in the flight, the crew request to climb to flight level 380 and to increase speed again to Mach decimal 81. The process for requesting and receiving clearance is exactly the same and the en-route controller performs the same actions, including the requirement to coordinate with Gander. Flight level 380, Mach 81 is approved for Shamrock 137. Yeah, flight level 380, Mach 81 is approved and Shamrock 137. Thanks, Gander. A restriction is placed on the flight to be level at flight level 380 by 57 North, 30 West. It's important that pilots understand what's meant by such a restriction. The controller requires Shamrock 137 to commence climb at a rate that ensures the aircraft will cross 57 North, 30 West, level at flight level 380. To reiterate, the flight must be level, maintaining flight level 380 before the defined clearance limit of 57 North, 30 West. Incidents have occurred in the past where pilots have still been in level change when crossing a specified boundary or position. Or worse still, where pilots only commence the level change when reaching the specified point. The flight has been asked to report reaching flight level 380. As the aircraft reaches the new assigned level, the flight management system automatically creates a new CPDLC message for the crew to send to Shanwick. When the en route controller acknowledges this, SATS is updated to show Shamrock 137 level at flight level 380. Warnings relating to American 45 have now ceased, as although the other flight remains on track echo, the same distance behind our aircraft. It's now 1,000 feet below. Shamrock 137 is approaching 30 west, and with it the boundary with Gander Oceanic Control. Gander are aware of the flight long before this, because of an automatic coordination process that took place a predetermined time before the airspace boundary. Following this data transfer, any change to the flight profile requires re-coordination with the next agency. Finally, the crew are given an automated message via CPDLC that service with Shanwick has been terminated and that Gander are now the active ATC provider. At this stage, Shanwick says farewell to another westbound transatlantic flight. The southeastern corner of Shanwick airspace is arguably the most complex part of the Shanwick OCA. The airspace, within which exist many crossing traffic flows, interfaces with four separate controlling agencies. And despite comparatively small dimensions, often accounts for a large percentage of oceanic traffic. When there is a high traffic demand for flights entering Shanwick, via the Brest, Shannon and Madrid oceanic interfaces, the resulting traffic flows will invariably cross each other. Daily flights to the Caribbean, South America, Canary Islands and the Iberian Peninsula enter via Shannon entry points. Crossing flights bound for North American, South American and Caribbean destinations entering Shanwick via Brest and Madrid. This inevitably results in a particularly challenging area to control in a non-radar environment. To control in a non-radar environment. To control in a non-radar environment. In order to manage demand effectively, a tactical traffic plan for all Shanwick airspace, with particular focus on the southeast corner, is made each morning. In the Prestwick Ops Room, a supervisor takes account of the most recent operator flight plan data to assess a more accurate picture regarding operator demand and predicted traffic flows. This information is accessed via interrogating the automated track tool for AFTN flight plan information and the remote computer access 
or RCA terminals which provide a link directly into the Central Flow Management Unit database in Brussels. From this derived information, a traffic plan will be created focusing on the allocation of levels, distributing the prime levels to predominant flows. On occasion, this may result in less optimal levels for the minor flows, but will ultimately benefit the majority of users. In order to rationalise these separate flows, the supervisor will look to identify any trends or common routings, following which a number of recommended tactical routes may also be designed. The rationale for creating these routes is the same as that for the creation of the main oceanic track structure, although tactical routes are not actually published to the North Atlantic operators. They are designed to assist oceanic planners in deconflicting traffic flows to maximise airspace utilisation, but are not mandated for use. Operators can view the current Shanwick tactical traffic plan located on the NATS customer website, accessed by selecting the relevant link on the Shanwick page. So, for any given flight, what will be the consequences of the above planning? With the creation of tactical routings, there is a chance of a reroute. In some cases, this will mean the possible addition or removal of a 15 west coordinate and or minor latitude adjustment. Changes to an oceanic clearance request will be highlighted to the crew by voice if delivered by the CDO or specifically annotated if sent via data link. Crews will be required to reprogram the flight management system in compliance with the oceanic clear routing, ensure conformance with any amended level and speed changes prior to crossing the OCA boundary, and importantly, to keep ATC updated with any revisions to the boundary estimate. Failure to do this may result in deviation from the oceanic clearance. By far and away, the main causal factor of gross navigational errors within the North Atlantic is flight crew failing to update flight management systems correctly and subsequently following the flight planned route instead of the oceanic ATC clearance issued. Within the Shanwick OCA, the majority of deviations from route occur within the southeast corner.